Yes. Motion to approve select board meeting minutes from May 2nd as submitted. Second. Motion to second. Uh, any discussion? The only thing I would mention is we had discussed that was in this last meeting or not, but the discussion on what the job descriptions were for the councils, and, and I was able to point it and send it out to everyone. This is what was provided some number of years ago. It looks like back 2003 or something like that. But it was all of the town and village uh, policies and job descriptions and ordinances. And I, I think that something like this might be handy, especially the newer flood board members to have something like this made up again. We did, and we distributed one. Yeah. Our first meeting this year, they just they had something like that. Those are those are policies, though, right? I do not believe that it has job descriptions. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, but we can add job descriptions to those. We also did not have a copy of the personnel policy, which probably ideally should be in that. Was it, was it missing the personnel policy? I believe so. Okay. Yeah, I believe so. I'll give me a second to make notes and I'll, I'll make that correction. Yeah, I just thought I'd share that's great. I would love to be able to borrow. Well, you can. I think I've got them because I've got them your email. Yeah. But I, I couldn't find electronic copies of the constable job description. Yeah, it was posted on a website before we had Alan Johnson website. Yeah. But uh, Susan Evans still has it. So I have many other things in here that begin. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Um. So we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. 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 Treasurer's report and reviewing of uh, approved bills, warrant licenses, and any other action. Rosemary, you got anything for us? Yep, of the city has sent their final school tax in. Right now our current taxes, our bus budget by 1.22 percent. Full the spent to date is at 77.7 percent. Revenue cover won't change a lot until I generally get this done. I tell you what, sorry, get all the money in for the restricted funds. Rosemary, what's our time level of appraisal today? Middle 90s. Oh. No, but we've had a few sales lately. That will turn it way down. We have one property that was. We had a price for $350,000. It's going for $880,000. Oh. 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 And actually, that isn't good because we just had a town wide reappraisal two, three years ago, and we had already down to 90 something percent COI. So that's not working. We're, we're going too fast. The whole state goes fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we we re, we did the appraisal right before COVID and kind of ready to decide how long to win. Right. Yeah. But that probably that sale probably won't be reflected for another two years. I do a rolling. It takes the day after what, three years. They do it every year, but it's a three year average. Three year average. That's a stunning difference. Because when we were doing the budget, we expressed concern that we might be looking at a townwide reappraisal within two or three years or like five years yeah, or something. Like that. Yeah. 
which isn't a full reappraisal. It's no. just a statistical one, and that would get us probably to around the 10-year mark. Yeah. That's why we needed to start putting money in the reappraisal reserve fund so we could be prepared. That's right. Yeah, the, the statistical reappraisals will will help us with this. And rapidly, as things are changing, we're going to have to do it relatively soon, and it won't last for as long as it might in other circumstances. Here, you might tell me how to plan it out. Just to give you an email. That could be like $250. Okay. Um, you guys are saying okay in public meetings. <laughs> <laughs> that was just one thing. <laughs> just like a few seconds. Uh, okay, Any, what else were there? What else got? On um, delinquent taxes. Mm -hmm. We're, we have three and a half percent left to collect for this year. We collected a total of 96.48%. And last year was 95.64%. And the year before was 96.14%. So mm -hmm. at this point, we're slightly ahead in previous 10 years. That one's kind of in the right way. Yeah. And I gave you a list of who's driven for that this point. Yep. Thank you very much. How does this compare to the one you gave us last last one? Last one we What's that? The one last you didn't have because you just went to the one. Oh, okay. And okay. Yeah. Most people have yeah. yeah. sent the letters and given them to us to respond. Well, so how can the first one is an ad moving? LLC. That's the LLC. Okay. A lot of the LLCs use the property address for their name. So this list is about normal of the year? Slightly better than normal. But there's one apartment owner that only pays the first two installments. That's what she said. That's uh, taking real hard. Um, I shut the windows to turn the back white noise off. The two windows are still open over here. Yeah, that's a that's not bad. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I can't hear. I can't I stand to have the air conditioning on when the windows are open. Okay. Um, that's right. I guess you guess Rosemary's done. Yeah. <laughs> All right. She's taking care of it. Oh, yeah. At least a normal. I thought it was the outside. Well, she's going to show up here. Leave the windows open. Yeah. 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 I agree. Okay, um, public works. Let me just make sure. Is, is everyone all right with the uh, budget and the delinquent taxes? Are there any other questions? Unless she has any <coughs> licenses or anything, she has to report on and say move on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Jason. Good, how are you? I just wanted to say hi. Get right back to you. Hey, Rosemary, do you have any license, liquor licenses or anything like that? No. Okay. Do you have anything else for us? Nope. All right. Yeah. Hey, Jason, you're up. Good evening. Good evening. Before I put a couple things and talk to you guys about the pavement management program. Now or later? Uh, I don't think we have it on the list for later. So, whatever you have for us. No. All right. Uh, I went to a couple classes. <clears throat> a couple of folks are getting in on doing a pavement and practice too. But I uh, took look at the roads and scale them. Uh, I got a number of scale. I can give you guys the information when I get it all together. 
And uh, so you take the road and you look at it and you base it on what it needs for work and you take that number, the, again, one in 10 roughly, and you add them all up at the end and it tells you whether or not that you should uh, you know, reclaim or where your money is best spent on the road. So if it's over a third percent, um, this repair. We'll move on to the next thing. I'll concentrate the clay hill by resurfacing it to get more light out of it. One of your marks is uh, their goal. To do that. So, do you, do you have to keep a spreadsheet of expenses by your road? As of now, say no. You say no. <laughs> Prior to this, no. But going forward, since the like, quad road project is set there, everything's over at the office or the shop. Yeah. Now. And I'd like to go forward, keep the dates and the materials, and like when we add the materials to the top when it gets reclaimed in to the road base and, and yeah. stuff. You would think that would be useful over a period of time to be able to say, will be. Yeah. So, Jason, is that uh, we used to we used to do a, a program called RSMS Road Surface Management System? Yeah. Is is that this, or is, or are you talking about something different? It's different, Pager. Is the one that's promoting this. This is the class that uh, we went to the other day and have another workshop coming up in June, uh, beginning of June. It's just a program they're putting together. Uh, Is there a cost of, cost of the town for the program? Or? It, I think there is a small, I don't, he's going over that at this next, uh, the first two meetings we're just to go over what to expect and what to look for. Go out and we looked at some roads, not our road, but where the class was and to get a kind of a feel for what is looked for and stuff. Then the, the final one there and go with more of what it would cost and get a, give us the information, uh, contact information so we can in contact with the company to see what something would cost. You don't have to do the full program like we can adopt pieces of it if we want and just do it ourselves on our own spreadsheet. Yeah we did just the we did just the payment. Yeah. It just big sections. Um, is it something I know one of the things that was difficult about the road surface management system was having consistency in the person that was doing the windshield surveys? Um, that's, that's what they were promoting. They two of us went down to the class, and they there's two or three people that do it. We go out and they you know take one of our roads, for example, send them out. Have them do the sheet, the worksheet, and to get them calibrated, I think they call it this way. They, they both know um, what to look for. And, you know, and they said it's best to have at least two. This way you can, you know, because your perspective might be different than my perspective. Right. I think it's a great, I think it's a great idea. It's a great tool. Yeah, I guess I would just echo it that as well. I think that would be very helpful information to the board on the same set the priorities on where which highway we should be focusing on for who paid or reclaim or, or just uh, see what um just while I got the floor I wanted to mention to you on um, green update I did receive feedback that you guys did a tremendous job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to have I was really impressed. Um, Jason, do you need anything in order to set up a, the pavement management plan? No, not as of now. I just wanted to bring, you know, tell you guys what we are looking into. And uh, after I get more information on this next meeting, I'm going to put that old packet to give all you guys, you know, you guys, you can see what they're offering and how far we want to go. And, you know, if you want to go all the way into it or just take bits and pieces from it. One of the things I like about it is that if you're going through a ranking system and that ranking system is uniform across the roads, it takes all the politics out of it. You know, my road, you know, the number of complaints you get, it's it's really based on the road condition, not any other factors. So I think it's a great tool. Yeah, help us like when we're looking at a road. What mound, for example, fill our head tracks in more than 18 months. So, by looking at that, one of the things on the spreadsheet, they give like a 
cheat sheet that you give us. That's just what the look for and what he sees, and then you know, what they seem to add to such things that stabilizes it, makes it safe. That your goal is to get twenty years. I'm not saying it happens in every case. He said some counties they've done, they go back every two years. They didn't want to take the time to put the better material, and you know. Yep. Um. I guess one thing I'll just say is that if we're going to adopt a valuing system, usually the program is set up um, extensively for a reason. And if we are going to look at customizing anything, we should understand why it was set up the way it was before we make changes to it. Uh, but I like the idea of doing a value system person. The only reason to customize things if they're for the municipality side of it, they're on a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. uh, they offer to a much bigger on Big statewide organizations. And they, uh, for the municipality side, we don't have to add that we have a 13 miles of pavement. Yeah, that wouldn't take nearly the scope of what we offer. They scale it down for what we have for roads. Sure. Any other questions for Jason? Jason, do you have anything else that you want to share by now? Oh, no. Uh, one thing about world science, but if you want to do that, and, oh, go ahead. All right. Brian, did you include that? Yes. All right. Brian, do you know if you guys copy the sign quote that I got today? I don't need to get it by email, but it is in front of you. It's here somewhere. Those are signs and stop signs. And uh, for the numbers in front of you, by getting the quality with us, uh, changing all the speaking signs for the recommendations of the Long County. It's taking quite a few out of the inventory. So I just wanted to talk back up. We've marked out on Gould and Western Road so far. And yeah, that's five signs so far. So my question was how fast are you guys looking to get the town pushed over to being signed correctly? This is a request from the Long County Sheriff's Department or from the state. This is the speed limit sign. Oh, speed limit. Uh, yeah, if you recall, when we passed our updated uh, speed limit ordinance, uh, a component that was still left to be done uh, was the recommendation that we place signs according to the federal guidelines for speed limits, which is that you should see a sign. I don't remember how many minutes of travel. Every four tenths for a yeah. 35 mile an hour road, and every six tenths for a 35 mile an hour road. 35. There's your sign pollution. That's right. Yeah, six tenths of a mile for 35 miles an hour. But it, 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 the idea is that for when you're traveling, you should see a speed limit sign every so often. Uh, and the Wild County Sheriff's Department recommends recommends following those guidelines for enforcing our speed limit ordinance. So that means we're going to see a rapid increase in the fines received for tickets being issued by Memorial if we do it according to MATC standards. I oh, sarcasm, right? That, that was sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. That was. Uh, but if, Sorry, you couldn't tell with my mask on, could you? It will bring us into compliance with the federal guidelines for science speed limits. So does that also include, I know at one point in time, you had to have, if there was a change from one speed limit to another, you had to have speed limit ahead change or speed yeah. limit reduction rate. Yeah. And that is that. I don't think that we have any of those currently planned. Unfortunately. We do where, like, for Gold Hill example, it goes from 35 and every reduced speed limit where it gets into the gold limit and the 25 mile an hour. Okay. So we, we do where they're required. Oh, already? Yeah. Okay. This just includes uh, the speed limit signs. 
and this, based on yeah and i just want to <clears throat> and this updates two roads no that's not the bill is not for two roads oh i i just you said you had marked two roads so i didn't two roads done so far i'd like to purchase this signs for the inventory and the news for this but i give you that sheet so you can see some of the price because the line item for the budget to sign the town in a quick manner would be over yeah. i don't have an exact number but i mean it's uh three dollars our budget is yeah. three thousand dollars yeah and to get what is it uh, a dozen signs plus some stop signs and some other things but uh, it's still around a thousand dollars right uh, for a dozen signs is this something that could potentially wait till next fiscal year just because of the added cost that we saw from mud season our budget's crimping down a lot closer and yeah, if it's yeah. just a you know fourteen hundred dollars that we don't have to spend for a month and a half we, we've got room in our, our budget for this right now there's a planned expense that with it, it in our projections it has assumed that we would spend all this money what jason's asking about is it's a question and it's also awareness for the board that if we don't overspend that line item it's going to be a long time before we get signs at the correct frequency all throughout the time what do we actually need right now like forget our, forget our policy like what what is the safety risk right now i'm comfortable with with the pace that we're going with it um, Wait, that doesn't answer the question are there any signs that well. we need to purchase right now so that we replace signs that would be a hazard in any way this the stop signs and then the other two handicap signs and i think we're down at least one 25 mile an hour sign on river road east yeah still that, that order in front of me we have to get so i could do what the work order we got out right now for and replace a couple of those stops Gotcha. So the projected budget that you sent out for last meeting two weeks ago had that line item at full spend of three thousand, yes. and spending this fourteen hundred dollars will not put us over that three thousand. No, we're still okay. well under the, the three thousand. Yeah, and that we spent around six hundred and dollars. Gotcha. It, it's really it's awareness that at this pace, mm -hmm. it's going to be quite a while before we're done with the project. If that's the board's desire, then that's fine. We can just, you know, keep it a slower pace so we don't see a spike in the budget. But we'll talk about it when we're writing budgets next year. I feel like this should fall into the a similar category as taking down elm trees, for example. Like it, we're not run, running up against anything very specifically. We want to address hazards and safety concerns, but if we're, you know, trying to become compliant, it's not a big deal to do that over time. Yep, this will leave us with a couple extra signs to fix down signs, also, so that if there is a safety concern, we can replace our current signs, and this will let us make kind of slow but steady progress towards complete compliance throughout the day. Eric? I guess the question is all of, or are there issues where some of it's not enforceable because you don't have the correct sign back? That's what Moral County says about all of them. Like they're not enforceable right now because of their inconsistency and they're not at the four and six tenths, you know, for the, the speed of the road, four tenths for 25 mile an hour, six tenths. That was their recommendation that they'd like to see them at to be enforceable. So, you know, a few years ago, all back roads not posted were 50 miles an hour. And the legislature, in their infinite wisdom, crafted a, a bill so that you could change all of your back highways to 35. And the requirement was any road that, as you entered the town had to be posted, posted to 35 miles an hour. But that covered the whole town. Is that changed? According to the sheriff's firm, that's my understanding is that it's changed. 
Because they all are marked like they're set for what the requirements were. Well, that used to be good enough for us. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean they, they what what has changed? Well, they changed the law apparently where that's no longer uh, enforceable across the whole town. If you just where, where you enter the town on a dirt road, any new dirt road in the town had to be posted, but you didn't have to post it all over, you know, every you know, so much distance. You only had to do it at the beginning of the highway. But yeah, um, Vermont state law has changed, and that's no longer the case. Because I heard, I didn't hear Vermont law had changed. I heard that the the recommendations for the standards organization. That's what I'm personally. That's what I'm most familiar with. I I don't have personal experience with what Eric's describing, but that's not the current standard that we're being recommended. So that used to be the standard. It's changed since then, but I'm not. And I just want to point familiar. out there's a difference between standard and law, and if the law still is a lot, still allows for uh, going onto a road having a posted speed limit. And that makes that road that legal speed limit. It makes then the more. standards are different than the law. Yeah, I, I think that's a question. That's a question worth having an answer to. I think what Brian is referring to, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, is the manual on uniform traffic control devices, the MUTCD, is a standard. And it's a nationwide standard. Um, and the law could well be something different. And my recollection of what the law used to be is similar to what Eric says. Anytime there was a transition between one speed limit and another, or anytime there was an intersection of a road, you had to have, you know, the, the driver had to be aware. It didn't have to be every four tenths of a mile or every six tenths of a mile. It had to be, you know, as a it's practical four matter. Four tenths of a mile is not a long distance. It's not a very long distance. And if we're going to do that, I think we, so there are roads where it makes absolutely we know that we know the sheriff isn't going to be on that road anyway um you know the roads where it just doesn't make sense to do that level just because the sheriff's department says we need to do it that way yeah. so i think it's a question we need to push back on on roger and the sheriffs a little bit on is uh are they if they took that ticket to court, would the court throw it out because we're not in conformance with MUTCD standards or we're not in conformance with state law? And that's not a question for the sheriff's court. That's a question for the, the law, right? The lawyers and the judges of the world. Well, it's a question for the sheriff's department. If they're telling our, our people that they're that's not true. going to issue tickets because we, we're not in conformance with MUTCD, MU, TCD standards, then we need to push back on the sheriff's department a little bit and say, really? Is you know, are you that's been a candidly, that's been a convenient excuse for a long time for not issuing speaking tickets. Maybe it's a question to pose to the league because obviously this is a state, it has state implications, statewide. Mm -hmm. um, they might have some things on. Yeah, let's find out whether it's a law. Brian, you got that on your list? I do. Turn. Doesn't it oh, I guess. A, yeah, a dozen signs. I mean, I've never seen radar on that, but they're, they're issuing ticket signs. There have to be three signs on your driveway. Here's <laughs> <laughs> a perfect example of a road that doesn't need it. But you know what I mean? Seems like Main Street, Clay Hill, Hundred Street, the Earl of Street, and Guy Up. I've never seen radar anywhere else. Because this is coming up under plan purchases, I think we could discuss it then. Some of this is to replace your inventory, anyways, right? So if there's you know more damage signs or whatever. There's some, yeah, there's there's stuff, there's six uh point one miles, six of the thirty-five was for the inventory. So you do need some stock to go go back to that hazard. Discussion. And you said the stop. You do need some stock. The stop signs are those it's inventory. The stop signs, the the uh, handicap, and one of the at least one of the twenty five mile. Six and six, six thirty fives and six twenty fives. 
This certainly seems like a routine and a purchase to me to, to say it's good. We will use all of these over time, whether we do it as part of the sign replacement program or we just use them for replacing damage signs. Gotcha. Um, I, I apologize if I confuse you guys by asking the question with that. I was just trying to do an idea of how many signs we were going to do a number in mind. No, it's that, good. That was it. It's um, all good. But we don't want you putting up signs every tenth of a mile on my road. <laughs> <laughs> So, just for more clarification, if I recollect, that law, the state law, was only on 35 mile an hour speed limit runways. So, we're the 25 mile an hour speed limits in the village mostly. Uh, that may not be you know, one sign that does it all. Yeah, it was unpaved roads too, I think that was the uh, right yeah. on Okay. So Brian will follow up on what the law says. Yeah. Uh, and in the meantime, it sounds like we have consensus that no one worries about replenishing stock. It's we coming up two items from now, anyways. We'll do it right now. Why do we want to talk about yes, it? Yes, we do. Do you have any concerns about replenishing stock? Move forward as planned. Just don't put them up. I think it's my consensus. Yeah. Every yep. quarter mile. Or whatever. There you go, Jason. Any other big items? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And like everyone said, thank you and the crew for a great update. Racial justice. Racial racial and social justice. Racial justice and social equity committee. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, so just a couple things to report on. Um, I sent you an email right before this um, meeting of our committee agreements that we just adopted at our last uh, meeting. And I can pull them up and read them if you'd like. Um, there was an idea that Matt Kenny uh, suggested a couple months ago that we can come up with some values and processes, just um, some just agreements for how the committee will be run and how we will communicate and all that. So um, we adopted them at our last meeting. Um, would you like me to read them? Okay. So our values are inclusive decision making, honor another's experience, strive for openness and honesty, assume good intent on the part of other participants, disagree and listen to understand, um, embrace discomfort and vulnerability, commit to learning and recalibrate as we learn, and take ongoing action to unravel white supremacy culture and other identity supremacy culture in our inner world and local community. And we ask for white supremacy culture not to assume that everybody knows what that means. Um, and we have our asterisk is uh, white supremacy culture is believed that white people are superior and the resulting system is meant to place white people predominantly in control of culture, politics, and economics. This belief is often, but not always, implicitly held as a result of social conditioning. The systems can be subtle, but historically include actions such as voter suppression, housing discrimination, education funding, discrimination, and the like. So those are the values we have in our process. Um, in, and, you know, this agreement to her, and, um, all that would be uh, work on racial justice and social equity often includes challenging discussions. Anyone present, voting or not voting, feels a discussion or statement has strayed from the work of the committee, they can request a pause in the meeting to reflect on the following. Number one, is the conversation productive to advancing the work of the committee? Number two, is the communication respectful and if not, what needs to change? Number three, are we properly centering the discussion on the impacts of people affected by oppression slash marginalization? Number four, are we adequately considering the impact versus intent? And number five, that the conversation should continue in the committee setting as opposed to a context outside of the community setting. What structural meeting components could be put in place? In all cases, the co-chair leading the agenda item in question will work alongside all voting and not voting members in an effort to operate consistently within our values. So that's what we, we kind of all came up with and uh, agreed upon and will be 
something that's sent out to the committee with our agenda, uh, so we can often reflect on that for our meetings. We would hope to get it on our website under the racial justice social equity tab, if possible. Um, just so it's really open for everyone to see what values we're operating under and how we um, try to conduct our meetings. That's something we can touch base about specifics more. So that's number one. Um, any questions about that? Well, I like it. Very, very well done. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, so then just a couple things that are coming up. We're planning a Juneteenth celebration on Sunday, June 19th. Um, I believe by the 4 30 or 5 30. And there will be publicity around that um, for this exact time. Uh, we hope to have some children's books in the library, right? Light refreshments, and some informational handouts, including one that Hockey Rhythm wrote for us. Uh, and uh, there's a number of Juneteenth celebrations happening around the state. And so we're kind of collaborating with Belong for Justice, who has held one here in Johnson for the past couple of years. And we um, will be doing it on the village green. And I believe we've already just sent in the village um, use agreement for the village green. So I think we already have that ready to go. Um, also on the village green, we will the trustees agree to hang the progress pride flag for June for the, the pride month at the village green. And then um, in July, two community members uh, leading a reading of Frederick's Frederick Douglass's speech, uh, What to the Slave is the Fourth of July. I believe it will take place July 9th. And it's a collaborative reading. So they will call out to individuals of our community who want to come and we can read a line or two of the speech and everyone can have a part in it. Um, so those are the three things coming up. And then just to report this past Saturday, we had our anti racist story time with Jay Basilier, who is the director of the Center for Teaching and Learning at NBU Johnson. This was kind of the last piece of our. Uh, Vermont Humanities Council grant that we got this past season. Um, and it went super well. We had about 14 kids and about 15 adults attended, attended um, this. And Jay read three books. One of them is called All Are Welcome by Alexander Penfold. One is called Our Bodies Are Cool by Tyler Feather. And the last is Anti Racist Baby by Hebron X. Kendi. And um, it was a really lovely um, afternoon. Uh, we had shade on the bandstand, and a bunch of books from the library that families can borrow uh, to have diversity and connectivity in the foreground. Uh, and we hope to work with Jay in the future again and offer another one of these. Because they're, they're new to our town. I think they just bought a house last August. And they approached us and said, Hey, I have a PhD in gender studies. and focus in anti-racist education. So what can I do to help? So it seems like a really good match. So yeah, that's our, that's our report. Sorry for gasping. <laughs> <laughs> you have limited long capacity. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's great. A lot of good stuff. Any questions? Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Well, Jay works there, so they're kind of our, our segue. And Jeff, they co-chair. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you, Sophie. Have you have um have you had um an expanded attendance in your meetings? Um, we I would say we have like three or four regular non-voting members. Um, but, and that, and that those kind of shit. Sometimes five extra, sometimes two. So it kind of rotates. I think a couple of meetings ago, we had two people that we never had seen before. Um, but I hope, you know, hope, hoping with this community agreement to get that more publicly out there that um, the narrative around our meetings will shift in a more productive direction for everybody. 
Great. Well, thanks for coming in and all the work that you've done. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next up is plan purchases. Are there any other plan purchases beyond the signs, Brian? No, I don't have any on the books. Okay. And then jumping into admin report. If we could first just um, add the lawn mowing contract as the first item. Sure. So the uh, RFP is out for uh, lawn mowing services. Um, we received a proposal from Robert and Sons to uh, continue services. Uh, it is due. Uh, proposals are due by the end of business tomorrow. Uh, and this has been out there for a while. It has been. Uh, I had to extend the deadline a little bit because I had traveled during the, that period, so I was not available to answer questions. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's been out there for a little while. Uh, I had a suggestion in a conversation with Beth earlier today that. Uh, next time we go out for bid for something like this, we should we should really go out to bid in the fall for the following summer. Uh, like this time, we ran into that Greg needed the fields before uh, the services were going before we were going to receive any bids. Um, you know, and that wasn't going to be a problem. So that's why we had to contract with Robert and Sons to extend their current contract a little bit before we sign a new contract with them or with the winning bidder. How uh, many bids is that? One. Again, I, I suspect that we're probably in a situation that most people um, probably have their clients and plans figured out for the summer. How was it? How was it advertised? Uh, we put it up on the website and sent it around to a few local vendors. Was it put in the paper? Uh, I did not publish it in the paper. Um, okay. Um, I feel like it is now. I mean, it's mowing season. After my lawn, that desperately needs it. Um, I wonder if we should have a contingent acceptance of the bid we did get, uh, assuming no others come in tomorrow. I don't even know what the price is. is. What's that? I don't even know what the price is. Oh. I would assume it's we really should whatever we paid this month, huh? We shouldn't know what the bid is until right. Yeah, that, we don't. Okay, fair enough. Part of the proposal is that we don't open the bids until they're revealed altogether. That's a tricky one because the only reason I really went out to bid is because they came back with an increase, yes. which inflation's going like crazy, but it's hard to predict when that's going to happen, you know. Well, they haven't increased their bid in six or eight or ten years. It's, it's been a really long time. So I'm not at all surprised that they that they want to do this. But on the other hand, you know, if we're going to go out to bid, we should make a good faith effort to go out to bid and get it, you know, get the word out there. And I, I just think uh, the cost of an ad and a news citizen is, you know, well worth it. We, you know, we used to get responses for things like that. So it's not everybody looks at the web page or front page for them. Right? Thoughts? How do we want to proceed or not? Do you want to move on and bring it back we'll, to the next meeting? We'll. Uh, I think we have to do it. Will Robert and Sons continue because they got that contract extension? Does that cover till our next meeting? Uh, Just these next couple of weeks. I think it does. I'd have to look at the calendar to see. I don't remember when June first falls. Whether that's. Uh, before their mowing date in Johnson or, or after. They mow once a week. Yeah, we, they, get, they mow once a week, uh, usually on Wednesday. Sometimes they get split over two days. June 1st is a Wednesday, if that's what you're asking. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah, that I guess would 
to put us out one week uh, if they weren't willing to. Maybe we should. If they will go on week by week contract until we have decided, then we should authorize that. Yeah. Um, because we won't be meeting until what, June 5th or something like that. Yeah. We won't even see the date. You are willing to continue to win? They've been willing to, and uh, they. Yeah, they've been pretty easy to work with. Okay. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, unless we want to meet on the fifth Monday this month as well. Is that tomorrow, Dave? No. Is it? Mm -hmm. It does. Jesus. <clears throat> it's not that close, is it? Yeah, it's two weeks away. So, okay. Oh, fine. I guess we're not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see if we can do that. Right. Okay. the purpose of doing that is to extend the bidding time period. No, we we won't need it. The email says don't close for tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Uh, we won't need it to open the bids until June. And their current contract will be up before the end of the this month. At the end of this month. But there's no way we can authorize because it's good for me. Well, that's a good question. When does our current contract expire? June first. We have we asked them to extend it. They said, and they have. Uh, I, I think if we asked them to extend it again, they would. Likely agreed to it. Well, that doesn't answer the question. When, when did it expire? Uh, when did the original contract yeah. expire? Uh, I suppose it hasn't been in effect at all this calendar year. So it expired. When do they stop mowing in the fall? But since then, we've extended to June 1st. Yes. It ended with last calendar year, and we asked them to come back for an extension to bow uh, before they start the uh, spring sports. So the question I think we need to answer, we have to answer two things. One is, will they continue to extend? Um, I think we need to figure out if they'll extend the weekly. That's the first thing, they'll take that action. The second is, if that's the only bid as of tomorrow, do we want to just add a wording of bid on our next agenda item, or do we want to go out to bid again? And if we do want to go out to bid again, if we only get one, uh, we should probably decide that quickly. I would say we'd have to add a wording of the bid. I'd like to see what the, what the bid comes in. Okay, so next item, okay, here. So next meeting, we'll talk Me about the, what the bid was. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, maybe there'll be more submitted tomorrow. Worst case scenario, we need to get that down that. Yeah, it, it, I'll let you know if there's going to be any problem with extending it. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, assess our contracted services. All right. Um, All right. So I can open us up about this and we'll do carry statements and if she uh, is. Here. Okay, great. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So uh, our current assessor, uh, Terry Savins, is very active in the Kind of state world of town assessment. Uh, she's been a great asset to the town. She is looking at scaling back, though. Uh, and at the same time, she's trying to increase the kind of number of people who are involved in the profession. This is something that was brought up that we might be able to work with her on about having. Uh, some people that she was training come in and to be able to assist with the, the growth of the profession. Um, 
the way that that looks like it's going to shape up is that Terry is would be stepping back from being our assessor. She has a, a proposal that she has drawn up with multiple talents for a shared position that she would serve as a trainer for. Uh, that would fill in as her replacement with her her assistants. Um, so her assistants or her <laughs> what are you what do you mean by do you mean people or do you mean help? That she would help the uh, the, the, the person who's coming in as a, a permanent person. Okay. The town, the position would be shared between multiple towns. We would agree on, on kind of how many days in each town. Uh, we would probably expect one day a week. Uh, generally serves Johnson pretty well. Uh, it could be limited in scope to what we have now. A couple of towns have expressed an interest in uh, assigning the E911 coordinator duties to this person taking this position, um, which is, we could take that or leave it. Um, and yeah, it, it would really have the capacity of filling in for, uh, for Terry. Um, right now, Hyde Park has expressed a great deal of interest and has volunteered to be the Post community for this, so that they would be a Hyde Park employee, and we would pay Hyde Park for one day a week of their time. Otherwise, it would function pretty much the same way that we're functioning with Terry now. So, this person has already been identified. Terry, okay. Is that correct that you hi, hi, uh, hi, I am here with you. I just want to let you know that I'm here to answer any questions and thank you for having the puppy there. <laughs> so um, so I'm trying to do what's called a shared assessor because um, so many towns need somebody to do their grand list maintenance. And because your grand list is your biggest checkbook in the town, it should be you know, watched by somebody who understands it and can do everything. So I am trying to do what's called a shared assessor job. And it works out to be $32 an hour. Um, but what that does is one town, which will, like Brian said, Hyde Park, will volunteer to be the parent town. And there will be, you know, say five or six other towns that all join in together and we have an MOU that's already written and um, everybody would, you, you'd see the MOU before you signed on it. And um, that town would agree for each hours that they needed. And then um, they would just work that one, that same person would work those same towns instead of um, having a contractor who comes in and just does it and leaves. So um, that's what I'm trying to do here in Vermont, not, not just for you guys, but everybody in Vermont, because Vermont has, has so many municipalities that need this job. This job cannot be filled by the younger generation because um, there's no full-time work in this, in this field. So if we get five towns to group together and hire one full-time person with benefits and everything like that, then um, then you will have uh, the younger generation getting into this field because right now the average uh, lister in Vermont is 62 years old. So I'm trying to create a shared assessor position. And, you know, I got to get the first group to get going and, and, uh, and you guys have, a, you know, showed interest in that. Harry, do you have the person identified? I do right now, his name is Scott. Um, I worked with him when I first started in this field. I'm trying to get this going for this July. Not, I'm not sure if it's gonna work out for this July, um, but 
the way it would work is the parent town would interview the person and the other towns could also interview the person. Um, the guy that I have that uh, is interested in his job is already about one third percent trained. And so uh, there would be myself and all the, you know, the, this, the, the state uh, property valuation and review that will help train him. And, um, you know, it's, it's really the only way to go because there's no other options because you cannot get this <clears throat> job with, um, you can't get this job filled because it's not full time. And what was the dollar per hour you cut out when you said that? It's 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 thir it's, a, it's about thirty two dollars an hour, give or take. We you know that's about what it is, depending on what the parent town's uh, benefits are. But thirty two dollars an hour, uh, one day a week for your town, you know, wouldn't amount to a whole lot, but um, it would at least uh, at least pay a. Full time this position. She had it listed like right here. Like the salary would be twenty to twenty-five plus health benefits, paid time off. Are there any other questions for Carrie? I have lots. Uh, okay, they can fit within a small window of time for tonight. Well, uh, it, the first question is, when would we be expected to uh, say year and eight to this MOU? Well, once I get enough, enough towns together to make this, so it, it amount, um, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. I, I need to get enough towns. I have six right now, but one of them just bailed on me. And I'm still waiting for a couple of others. That's why I'm doing these Zoom meetings to get the select boards to understand why this need is, is has to be done is because, um, once we get enough towns, like say Johnson, so for Johnson, you would need this person one day a week. And this this one day a week person would, because you don't have zoning, it's very difficult to try to grow your grand list. And um, they, uh, they would have to be able to, um, you know, do that. And they can also do, um, they can also help with E911 they can also do uh, help with getting zoning if you you know if you're leading that way. Um, just just for an example. Um, the the question I was really trying to get at, Terry, is is when seven. would you when would you need us to act on the MOU? I I, I get the rest of it. Okay. Uh, once we get enough towns to be able to do this, so. Nobody has to pay more than that thirty-two dollars an hour. I thought I would have it going by this July, but I'm not quite sure it'll be that soon. But it will be within hopefully within the next few months. Next few months. That we would need to sign the MOU. She was hoping to have it by July 1st, but she's saying it might be a few months. And uh, um, another question, Terry, would be you, you, the basic MOU has up to six towns. I'm having a hard time figuring out how one assessor could serve six towns. It would probably depend on the size. Waterville and Belvedere are only need one day every other week. Right. So there's the problem is I have towns that only have 250 down. parcels or 300, and they only need like uh, 12 to 16 hours a month. So I need to get enough towns together um, and not have it too overwhelming for the this time of the year when you have to get your grand list done. Um, so, uh, so that... way uh, you know i don't want I, like say i have johnson hyde park i don't want them to have to pay more until we get others towns interested is she just looking to see if we're interested is that what I'm right trying to is an expression of basic interest we don't need to sign the document tonight 
but do we want to continue the conversation? Are we interested in, in a model like this? Okay. The question I got is maintaining the grand list once a week throughout, you know, 11 months of the year is probably not doable for Johnson. But in the springtime, when the listers used to be really busy, they were in here five days a week. How is that going to work? Because every town is going to need the assessor at the same time. Well, the problem is, is that your, your map hadn't been updated in three years. And when I came in, I'm, I'm still working on that. I'm getting it going. Um, so if you have somebody there available all year long, they can take care of your mapping. They can take care of all your transfers and everything that need to be done. Where right now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm having, not that I'm having a hard time with Johnson, but um, just trying to get your grand list done because you don't have the, you know, the uh, permitting. I have to try to find stuff that's being done. And if you have somebody there one day a week, they can take care of your mapping. They can do your E911. They can. And, and I, I agree with all that. Take care of anybody that was that here. On your grand list, which I have been finding. Anybody who's here one day a week could maintain the grand list with any land transfers and such. But April 1st, who's gonna go out and look at any new structures that have been built and uh, assess all of those? Well, I've, I've been doing that this year and I've only had like less than 20 because I can only go by what the state is permits. Essentially, she can't get to every new build because we don't have zoning. So she's going by Act 250 permits and word of mouth. And there's not a ton of new properties that need to be reappraised in this town because of that. Terry, I, I have another question. I, I like the basic concept of trying to share an assessor. I also really liked the NEMRIC proposal of doing a rolling reappraisal would would you consider either now or in the future building into such an agreement the concept of a rolling reappraisal Nimrick lo left your town because you don't have zoning I and that's why that. i have it now Be and that's why they said they wouldn't do that because you don't have zoning so by not having zoning, it's hard to do rolling reappraisal because you have no zoning, you have no records for us to look at other than and somebody <laughs> built a shed. If somebody builds something on the main drag, they're gonna get seen, they're gonna get assessed. But it's not fair for George back in the woods who builds the same thing, who doesn't get the value for that because Nimrick is not going to go looking for that stuff. I, I understand that, and I understand the problem of the lack of permits. The, the, the concept originally with the Nemrick and the rolling reappraisal was that one quarter of the town every year would get visited by an assessor, whether there was a permit or not. And that was, you know, that was in, in at least in theory going to somewhat make up for the lack of, of a permit process because every property would get visited. Um, and I, I understand that, you know, it didn't work out with Nemrick, but I, I like the concept of a rolling reappraisal. We're running into that issue tonight in earlier discussions about our CLA is dropping uh, because of what's happening with, you know, sale prices. Um, so I guess my question still remains is, would you consider the possibility of building a rolling reappraisal into this kind of a concept? And if you could just answer it quickly, we need to keep moving. We're actually pretty far behind schedule. Yes, you're, you're, if somewhere. you hire somebody one day a week, they could do that. Um, can I make a proposal? From what I'm gathering, Terry's looking to see if there's interest by the town. If we all have interest in it, is there any way that we could pull together questions for Terry, like through email to Brian, and he could ask them. And sure. that way maybe people's questions are getting asked, but we're not holding up the meeting. 
Yeah, and I can I can gather the question and then give them back to you so that uh, conceptually we can. I, I have a little bit of trouble hearing it. Sounds like Terry's connection isn't great. So if we do if we do this where I you ask questions and I deliver them as a report, I think that that might gotcha. Help conceptually, like checking temperature. You already said you were. I like the basic concept. Conceptually, I agree with it. Okay. So I, I guess the answer to tonight is yes, we're interested, but there's questions, right? Perfect. I even have questions, but we are. So let's, okay, yeah, so them. let's do that. Thanks, Evan. And so Terry, we'll get back to you with questions, but there is okay. general interest. That's, that's perfect. Thank you, Terry. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, uh, I understand it's important to you, Duncan. I just think it's interesting. Oh, look, we're required now. Okay. It is very the basis of everything we, our budget is very important, for sure. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Um, historical Society needs the second floor on these options for current tenants. Which I believe everybody got an email that Evan sent. Do you have that? Yeah. Printed out as well, Mary Jean. That's okay. I have it in my email. Uh, I sent it to everybody, yeah. Um, actually, next time we should get that printed. We should. I, I apologize. I don't know this. I should have requested it. I just sent it out. That's okay. fine. We all learned a lesson. Done. Uh, okay. So I can read it if you want. Also, on in the packet on page twelve is the spreadsheet from prior discussions. I think we have some copies. Um, I think everybody, Mark, have you had a test or anything? Yeah. yeah I wouldn't mind a copy if you have it. I like paper. It's an organized mess. <laughs> you watch, he's going to try and give it to me at the end of the room. <laughs> you want <laughs> it? Okay. So, Brian? Yeah. Or, yeah, or do you want to give hand up someone else? So the, the the situation before us is a question about what to do with the second floor of the whole house. Right now, we are renting it out to tenants for use as an apartment. The space would be useful to the historical society for a couple of different purposes. Um, I know you've got some future plans that could take advantage of it and more current plans for uh, kind of expanded storage. Uh, and uh, uh, right. you told me before some of your different plans for the current space, but, uh, but it, there's some current plans for it and future plans with the possibility of upgrading it to make it uh, ADA accessible, uh, could be additional storage space and programming space, but they have enough to take advantage of it in its current form right now. So they have the proposal before us to, uh, if we're interested, switching it over to uh, being occupied by the historical society instead of the current. Uh, and as a reminder, our, our lease is up uh, June 1st. And there's a 30 day notice requirement? There is a 30 day notice requirement. Yeah. If we're conceptually in agreement that uh, I'll have the historical society take over the second floor, then I would suggest we move tonight to uh, notify the tenants of this meeting. This would be. Uh, I have a meeting with the tenants on Wednesday. I'm going to inform all of the results of this meeting. And I would submit a motion that we inform the tenants that their lease will not be renewed. I don't think we all talked about that. I guess you can you submitted your motion. Is there a second for motion? Mark seconding it. Okay. Discussion. I mean, I think we can continue the discussion for the historical society on when and how and how what the numbers are going to come out to, but. I almost think that this isn't really a winning proposition for us having the tenants with some of the damage that we've experienced and uh, 
some of those costs associated with it. I think we, we so are you proposing looking for new tenants in the interim period? Yes, I am. Fair enough. Um, I, so I, I think it's, we're ahead of the game as far as in our property and making it if we uh, allow the historic society to take over the site. I think we're behind money wise if we do that. And I, I do understand this letter that we received. I mean, um, and I guess I was not on the board when the voters voted to purchase the Holcomb House, but they did say that, uh, you know, it was the, it directly says it was our understanding that the extra revenue from the apartments would be set aside by the town for maintenance of the property. The Holcomb House was never intended to be a revenue source for the town. Now, I don't actually believe that it's a revenue source for the town because uh, there is quite a few expenses. Um, when we add up the income from the back apartment and the front apartment, we come out with a net positive in terms of taking the heat, electricity, sewer, and water out. But there are other expenses coming up. Uh, roof replacement, we've had to work on the stairs where Donnie lives. There's been multiple other things. So I don't actually think positive for the taxpayers we come out that way. And the specific motion was to come up with a plan at no cost to the taxpayers. And there was a comment at the last meeting about how the historic society would be willing to share in the cost for renovations, but we don't know what those costs are. And currently the agreement with the town is that the historic society will pay for any renovations for space that they occupy. So are we reneging on that agreement and the town's gonna pay for it out of taxpayers' money? to get us net positive. I just had just gone that far. I thought the first step we gotta take is notifying the tenants that we have intentions of the historical society taking over the back floor. And then we can work out what exactly the number's gonna be. They got a proposal in. It may be close to what the cost is gonna be. We won't be heating the building to the same degrees we are now. Essentially, yeah, I mean, and inflation heating, inflation of heating is difficult. But if we had exact numbers, which it's all projections, but you have to do the best you can and Duncan did a great job with projections. There's not much margin there. And that doesn't include the cost for maintaining, plowing, salting, mowing, anything like that. I'll bet you we're pretty slim. For being able to assist them. I don't disagree with what you're saying, Evan, but I, I think the first step that the historical society was hoping for was kind of the basic agreement that this proposal for sharing the utilities was acceptable, which would then give the historical society the next step and the task of putting together an actual proposal that the select board could act on, which which would get into, you know, what the expenses would be to renovate it for ADA compliance and things like that, what the historical society would propose to contribute to that, um, et cetera. So I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that, <laughs> In reality, Eric, I, th I totally agree with the idea of, that you're proposing, but I suspect it's going to be a while, and the Historical Society can weigh in on this, but I think it's going to be a while before the Historical Society has a specific proposal to come back to the board with. So we could be losing, you know, we could be losing, you know, three, four, six months worth of rent. Which if we're showing a positive of $1,000 a month roughly right now, but aren't we expecting to spend about $20,000 on that roof? I thought that was a projected number I heard. So that I, I would only that take that 20 months to break it. even without costing the taxpayers direct money. When, when you have to put $20,000 into Right, but this revenue source breaks even for the taxpayers at some point, much quicker than 
The yeah. net positive income right now with just Donnie's apartment would be 4,500 bucks a year. It would. Which could be so, rolled into a capital reserve fund too. But that's also on projected numbers. Right. If it was slightly lower, it would then only take five years to break even on the road <laughs> instead of a year and a month or six months, sorry. Yeah. Um, just one second. Do you have anything else that you want to bring up? No. Uh, you can talk. Did you have anything else to add? Uh, well, just, you know, I know the motion's been made and seconded. My, my only thought is that I personally, I'd be comfortable with notifying the tenants that we may pull the trigger. You know, this is likely to happen. We, could pull a trigger any time on them, you know, 30 days or maybe if, I think 30 days is probably reasonable. Um, you know, again, a historical society can probably give a better idea of how long it's gonna to take to come up with a formal proposal to occupy that second floor. But I have a feeling it's gonna be several months at a minimum. Whether be, like, the first step was the idea of the, that the tenants would, you know, be, Asked to leave or whatever. That would be our first step. And then only would come in. But until we knew that there was not there was a chance that we were going to be going upstairs, we wouldn't be able to. Um, we need to know what's going on. I still think the chance is there. There just needs to be. The chance is there? What do you mean? For the historic society to occupy the second floor. But just getting rid of a tenant when a former member of the historic society has already said it could be several months. Seems like putting the cart ahead of the horse. Well, it seems to me that you need to access to that space. I, I, would, I would think that you give the tenants their notice, they're going to have a sign of another year at least for them. So you give them notice. Fingers crossed, maybe they'll lose. Maybe they won't. But, um, and then, then the historical society has access to the, to the place to put together a proposal of what they, what they can raise and what the town share will be, what their share will be. And if we say, no, we don't like this, we'll rent it again in about two minutes. So we would have just lost money for not knowing an answer. Doesn't seem like a great plan to me, but I guess I'm not the one making the motion or seconding it. I don't, don't have to. Now, it'll be June, June 5th, 6th, and 17th before they bring the meetings of the I'm meeting with them. Yeah, that would be the 18th. Okay, so it'll be June 18th before they're even kept the DL. Maybe a first of the month lease. And then uh, I'm sure that there's probably going to be some work involved in getting the place cleaned up. Uh, probably going to be, you know, who knows, there's in the walls or whatever. Just some time before it even could be occupied. And we certainly want to, if I remember correctly, there was a damage deposit taken as part of the. We yeah. want to make. Darn sure we don't release that damage deposit until we're real sure. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we'll have to assess the property. Okay, any other comments? Uh, I will just raise that the tenants uh, approached me and asked, asked for the, the update and set up this meeting. They did offer uh, that they would be willing to accept basically any terms that we offered them. For any length of time, so that if we, if there was something else that we wanted to do, I, I understand Mark's point. I think it's true that you, for the historical society, to develop a plan, you want access to the space. Um, we could build that. I mean, we could build that into a re a revised rental agreement that the yeah you know historical society had had guaranteed access for the purpose of developing a plan. You know, and gave them, you know, a 60 days before they moved out or something like that to cover a little bit of rental income while we were making the transition. You know, if that was something we were interested in. 
So I would be interested some, in that, but that's not the motion on the floor. So we've got some language. I would consider that kind of amendment if secondary. Would it be appropriate to hear from the historical society with regard to whether they think they can make something like that work or not? As far as class, as far as well, you know, when I when I initially thought about this and when we first talked about it, we said the first step is to come up with a sharing plan for the utilities. And if the board agreed in that with that in concept that we would move to the historical society would move to the next step, which would actually be developing a, a specific plan. Um, you know, and that's going to be I mean, that's going to involve, uh, you know, getting permits from the state for ADA, you know, accessibility. That is not going to be a slow process. Uh, I would be surprised, candidly, if that can take place within a year from now. You know, in all honesty, having, got, having been through the process before, um, it's not going to be a simple matter to, to come up with a plan that we can get approval for, because that's a public building, it will be subject to all public building requirements, ADA requirements, et cetera. That isn't gonna happen overnight, which is the only reason really that I'm, you know, conceptually, I like the idea of telling the tenants to get out and just having the building vacant. As a practical matter, um, that isn't gonna happen overnight. And it, as long as we could give the historical society access that they need to de develop the plan that then comes back to this board for you know review and approval before anything really happens. I'm, I'm okay with that, but but I, I don't know where the historical society stands on, on such a concept. What makes you think they're going to make the ADA compliant this year? I thought there was more of a storage. Mark's right. I think right now we're thinking of one step at a time. So, you know, the first step is for tenants, the second step is for us to assess what's going on up here. And I think storage right now is a big, is a big piece for us. The downstairs is getting really crowded. We can't put the displays up there that we'd like to, you know, have because we have so many things that are still. Not even in the historical building because we can't, you know, have a place to store it. And we want to do it in an organized fashion. So we can do it by like displaying what's going on. But I, I don't think what Duncan's saying is true. Like it's not going to be an overnight thing as far as us going upstairs and making all the rooms displayed and um, in perfect order. So the first part of it would be a lot for storage right now. I think I think um there's gonna be a lot to do upstairs. Technically you know, Mark, all, there's gonna be a whole lot to do in that that's technically if the historical society occupies that even for storage it is supposed to be all building codes and standards which would include ADA accessibility. Um so I disagree even if it's closed to the public it's a public building. So, so that's how private uh, nonprofits get around it because they're not a public building. There's no access to the public building. Yeah, there's no access to the aspects. That's that's not really the question whether the public has access to it or not. It's whether or not it is classified by the state as being a public building. And if it's a public building, even, even historical society board members themselves going up and down. For example, if we had a handicapped person on a historical society board or as a volunteer, that second floor would need to be accessible to them in order to store stuff up there. Um, uh, Maybe talk about elevators. So yeah. well, it's, it's not, I don't there. think it could be a stair lift. But yeah, it could be a stair lift, and there are other there are other options. That's that's part of 
that's part of the plan that the historical society needs to come up with and bring back to the board. So in a way, I think we're almost getting ahead of ourselves. I mean, the, the initial part of this was, do we, do, do we agree in concept to the cost sharing of the utilities? If, if the idea, I mean, there's a motion on the floor to- You can amend it. Donna, can you restate the motion? <laughs> well, it's basically not to renew the leaks, right? Yeah. 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 The motion was to inform the tenants that their lease will not be renewed. Thank you. Because they want. So you're not you're not really going to amend that motion. Because if we were doing the amended lease agreement, I guess we just need a new motion. I think that only covers the notification, right? Any other any other action would need a new motion, yes. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Yes, I'm not making a comment. Uh, in all the visits that either Donnie or members of this board have made upstairs, uh, I think those tenants present a huge exposure to this town. And the way they keep their trash pile. We've already had a couple of incidents of stuff leaking from the ceiling in the places that don't. I don't think the tenants being wrong, no matter what else happens, will help the situation in the building and the collection which we have downstairs. Some of which is simply irreplaceable. Thank you. It's a fire hazard too. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion to inform the tenants that we do not want to um, extend the lease. We ready to vote? Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Okay, I have it. Roll call. Okay, next steps. Are there any other discussions or actions that we'd like to take related to the Star Society and the Tolkien House? I would motion that we sign an amended lease agreement that gives the Historic Society access with new tenants. Well, I guess, do we sign one or do we post for a new leasee? So you're looking for new tenants. We didn't, I didn't hear your motion. I was motioning that we find a new leasee or renter and sign an amended uh, rental agreement with them that gives the historic society access for development purposes. Exact wording of that, we would have to discuss the so rental agreement at a future meeting. So you'd like to post that the, the second floor apartment is available for rent with historical society having access to that apartment? Yes. Um, I don't know if we can do that with state law. Can you do that? Like in the tenant landlord laws? I feel like you can't. It's worth a try. I mean, I think the same tenants could apply for this new lease that Evans is proposing. They could. They could. Yeah, but, even, but, but, the, but the motion select. is like, is the motion a legal motion? Is really my question. Like, whether or not who can apply, whatever. But is that something we can do? Amending a rental agreement to give times of entry? I don't. See why that would be a problem if they were uh, defined. I think the way Evans makes his motion is he's proposing a new lease be drawn up with new leases, which could be the same members, the same people, and yeah. providing access to the historical society to evaluate the upstairs. And I would suggest if you were going to make a motion like that, that you would have a it's a renewable on a thirty day. So that we could uh, terminate it at any time when they're ready. 
do we really want to sign a contract every 30 days when we already have a 30 day cancellation at any time? Yeah, could be a okay, with a 30 day automatic renewal period once initially signed. Your second. Your second. And the motion dies. Failed. You tried. Hmm? You tried. Okay, any other discussion? So, so, so do we do we need to do anything to I mean since the town is technically the owner of the building, do we need to give any permission to the historical society once the building is vacated or once the space is vacated for them to have access and do what they need to do. I think we should add it to an agenda once we know that the tenants are I, vacating. I agree. I think we need to have a deeper discussion because like I said, a long term thing whatever it. Fair enough. Okay, so. So I'm informing them uh, that the current tenants, the lease is not being renewed. Yeah. They have 30 days to make uh, a point of point of order. I don't think we've actually taken made any decision on the, the actual proposal that the board has in front of us for the. Yep, that, I'm, yep. that's why I was going back. Yep. So we need to. So that's one part of. I think. Two. I think that is the decision. No, the second part of number. No, probably is. Well, hold but... on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The second part of the number two is historical society use of the second floor and the proposal in front of us. Are we acting on historical use of the second floor or are we not? Oh, I think so. and yeah. if we are so, acting, I would just suggest we have a motion to act. Yes. Clarification on are, are we accepting the, the outline of the proposal? Is that I think this um, goes between the email that we have, this document that's here in front of us in terms of the costs um, and the line itself is about historical use of historical society use of the second floor so yeah i think it's do we want to act on historical society's access to the second floor or discuss how we want to proceed or do we want to table that until the tenants leave i feel like they kind of go hand in hand but we should call it out if they are going hand in hand Meaning, our motion Good. that we just had was only to tell the tenants we do not want to renew. Correct. Well, I will. I will make a motion that we accept in concept the spreadsheet that was provided to us with regard to sharing or cost sharing of the utilities. And can I add to your motion in providing or operating access to the historical society to the second floor? To do an evaluation and present a final report. Well, I just proposed that and I thought people said no to that. But, well, it sounds better when I do it. It does. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. I, I would accept that as a friendly amendment. Are you ready to make a second? <laughs> yeah, I said. So is that as clear as mud? Donna, yeah, Donna, how, are you, how are you feeling over there, Donna? I feel okay about it. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion to approve the shared expenses as proposed in and concept. to give in concept. And concept's a big one because, I mean, the fuel oil is going to double this year, anyways. So we're really not to be anywhere near these projected numbers. But that's part of the motion too, is that granting the historical society access and requiring a final report. Access upon the vacate, the vac vacant right. apartment. Assuming the tenants need. So requiring that they provide a report, that's part of the motion? 
No. I thought that was in my motion. But well, be able well to... you said authorizing access for evaluation and providing the report, which I guess I didn't take to mean you were requiring that they provide a report, just that it would give them the ability to, but to access and specify that it's required. With your motion. Uh, I. Well, it was your idea to have the, have the second part of that access, which I'm fine with. I'm, I'm fine with just authorizing the board access to the second floor for the purpose of planning. It doesn't right. matter because the report is going to end to determine what we do next anyway. So it sounds like it's a, your interpretation is okay. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion or clarification? Okay. Uh, These are not accurate numbers anymore. So we're approving it conceptually. Would you like to define conceptual? My, my original motion said approving these numbers in concept. And by that, you mean if they change, we would have to reevaluate it? Well, some of these numbers probably aren't going to. You're the one that prepared it. So. Yeah, yeah, and, and it was given. It was it was prepared based on historical information, right? Provided by Rosemary based on you know what we knew at the time. So, it, I, I guess my response to that, Evan, would be even if the price of heating fuel goes up. Right now, our lease with the tenants includes heat and electricity and water and sewer. It's all built into one price. So does. the town's cost would go up regardless. But we would have the ability to potentially change the rental amount. But the building expense would go down. Because even if the rental income stayed the same and he cost more, there's a lot more of a buffer instead of the building going negative. Are we splitting hairs because we aren't yet working through what our agreement with the historical society is going to be? Fair enough. Like we're splitting hairs. Okay, um, so we have a motion. Any other discussion? Okay. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed? Nay. I have it. Okay. Any questions? Okay. I think we got it. I pretty much got it. So we'll, we'll go upstairs and we'll just evaluate it once the plan is and we'll work at it step by step as to what the report will be asking. Okay. And then we'll figure out what the yeah. town historical society agreement will be. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, American Rescue Plan Act discussion dates. I would like to propose two dates. Let's try to make this quick if we can. I already forgot them, Ryan. Do you have them by chance? Uh, Thank you, guys. Two seconds. You don't want to stay for the rest. We're only going to be here for another two hours. Two hours. I think I proposed the eighth or the thirteenth. Yes. I'm confident in that actually. Uh, of June. Of June. Uh, thirteenth would be tough because it's a trustee meeting, but um, eighth would be fine. Or thirteenth late is fine. Okay. What, what were you proposing? So this is for the ARCA uh, discussion for the meeting and getting feedback. Yeah. And it, it, it'd be a meeting dedicated yes. just to that one item? It's yep. for discussion. Hmm. I like the eighth better than the 13th. Oops. Okay. Don't feel anything about the eighth. Um, same time, same channel. Uh, yeah, probably seven o'clock start. Seven o'clock start. Different uh, time. Yeah. Well, single topic. We're not allowed to add any agenda items to that meeting. <laughs> Zero. I think we might need to. <laughs> 
if we want to catch up on some, we probably should. Okay. Uh, so I'm feeling like there's a consensus. Let's do it. Okay. Next cool. item. Um, this review updates for skate. Yeah. Uh, Casey mm -hmm. and Bobby, the you were here at the beginning. So Bobby, I'm assuming you're here to talk about the bridge. I'm here to hear about the bridge because yeah. Rob Rodriguez didn't be here. Uh, we switched items for it. So we're doing the skate park first and okay. then going back to the bridge. So shake it up a little. I need to yeah. I need a zoom on that. Okay, go so, ahead. Uh, the that's the British visual aid, right? Cool. Okay. Uh, so the very quickly, uh, there's a couple things going on at the skate park. We've got a few issues with kind of some folks using it that are making it unfriendly for some of the other users. Uh, that people being confrontational, drinking, uh, smoking, uh, having some problems with the skate park. Neighbors are complaining. Uh, the skate park committee is on top of it and taking a number of actions to um, kind of tighten up the existing rules at, at this time. Not really, I correct me if I'm characterizing it wrong, but I don't think there are any new rules. It's just stepping up enforcement of our, our existing rules and policies at, at the skate park. Uh, there are some there are some upcoming plans for new skate features. Uh, and, and extension of the concrete bowl. Yes. That's, you know, replacing the concrete. Which is, uh, I'll have recommended by VLCT for injury prevention. <coughs> um, my recommendation on this is that we've got a committee to handle it. They're doing a good job of it. I think it's appropriate that the board knows that there's things happening there, but. Uh, because you have a greater interest in kind of the details of what the plans are. Uh, I think that we're okay to move on. I think we want greater detail in the skate park. Okay. I, I have a question about um, enforcement. Um, it, it's great to post, um, you know, post regulation. What? If you start you know, enforcement, how many hours do you? We have, have like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, my, my question is a simple one. Um, it's one thing to post a board that says no drinking. Yep. Um, I don't think there's any, I don't think, candidly, I don't think there's anything the, the uh, Sheriff's Department can or will do. If we drafted an ordinance against open container on municipally owned properties, that would be enforceable, and it, you know, I guess maybe it's something we should think about as a board whether or not we might want to consider adopting an ordinance. The village right now has an open container ordinance. Uh, we, it, to the best of my knowledge, we do not. We we do not have an open container ordinance. Uh, my recommendation on that right now, the, the our policy at the skate park, uh, the existing policy does prevent the use of alcohol. Our biggest problem with that, uh, when it's, is when it comes to confrontation with other park users. Uh, that confrontation between park users is something that we can issue an enforcement about. We can ask someone to leave up to issuing a no trespass order if someone is belligerent and combative with other park users. And it doesn't matter so much about it doesn't necessarily matter uh, about the open alcohol if there are behavior issues that we can address. Uh, so that's what we would be requesting enforcement support for uh, is folks that are not following the rules of the park and especially folks that are being belligerent and but. Uh, Making the park unusable for them. So the policy was something that the sheriff's department couldn't enforce. But if no. they did an ordinance, they could issue a civil They could, but they also would be able to deal with somebody trespassing on the property if they were breaking our, our ordinance. 
or excuse me, breaking our, our policy. If our policy says we can't drink here, that would be the second time when they came back to trespass. Yes. Okay. Or refuse to leave in the first place. Okay, so, yeah, um, an underlying principle side that for many details of the issues is that um, it's our understanding that many people do varieties vis a vis what the town can do and what the committee can do. Um, we are confident that we can make rules. If, if we can make rules are, that are not supported by an ordinance, not supported by an official policy, not dependent on you know, a, a police intervention thing, like no alcohol, no, you know, no, no smoking of any kind, it's how it's how we started, um, but it, it wasn't odds with reality and the law. So if it, it, it can be clear to all of us that we can make rules that you all would know about and you know about as to how that space should operate, then it's all it's we'll work it out with with, with the various stakeholders. That's the underlying principle, and as long as that's fine with everybody, we can turn this around. Rules are great, but we all know that it's the few people who break the rules that spoil up for everybody else. So I guess I'm just looking for a way to deal with those people that break the rules consistently. I, I also don't want to put you or, or Lisa or any other town employee in a position of intervening with somebody who's been drinking uh, and maybe exhibiting behaviors that are not appropriate um you know I, the last thing i want to hear is that you got injured you know by some asshole pardon my language uh who was not obeying the rules so you know that's one of my concerns too right you know i, I don't that's all very nice and good, but I don't think we should necessarily um, just allow people uh, carte blanche on this thing. I raise the ordinance issue just you know for our consideration if it's something we might want to do. You know, we can certainly think about it. Would you want that to cover like the old mill park and the wreck fields and every year or are you talking about an ordinance just for the skate park? I mean, we can have both of if I would say, you know, if I were talking about it, I would say you, you no know, drinking on municipally owned property. If you were right for it. Yeah. yeah. That would shut that Exactly. Well, the village, the village has an ordinance right now. And, <laughs> and technically, technically, people are not following the ordinance, and the sheriff's department doesn't enforce it. But if somebody would really be outrageous, they could. So is there an appetite to put drafting an ordinance on our list of things to do and our priorities or not? I've seen the list. Yeah, yeah the grant list. It won't fit in in the next 12 months. I don't see an appetite for adding. OK, don't see an appetite. You can add it to the list so it isn't lost. Let's do that. Yep. Um, but let's not put a date on it. It seems like. Problems at the skate park sort of going waves. You know, you have a little bit of a time where you have a lot of issues, and then it quiets down and it goes away for a while. So and that that is true, but I have to say, unfortunately, that it's overall a really rising curve. And it's this I mean three things: COVID, the legalization of marijuana, and the fact that over time, and you should like to this out in a pretty thoughtful letter that you wrote me. Um, over time, something nibbled the death by ducks. Uh, you know, without being able to say, you, it, it's, you lack the clarity. You can't do this. You can't say that. So it's all good. And you can't enforce it. And it's complex and it's splintered. And the result of, I'd say, those three things, you know, we, we really lack the ability to act clearly and concisely. 
during COVID, we moved a legalization of marijuana. Yeah, it goes up and down, but man, it's hit a peak that it's never been before. But I, I am confident, as is Lisa, that with discussion with stakeholders, da -da -da -da, and you know, we can make we, we can make those rules and you stand behind them. It's fine. But we will. Okay, well, sounds like we'll receive some updates a little later <laughs> how things are going. I'm, I'm always, the supplier always is there. Fair. Okay. Thank you. Next up, we've got the uh, pedestrian group. So, a little bit of background. Uh, about this, the uh, many years ago there was a pedestrian bridge that crossed the. I say pedestrian, but it was a multi-use bridge. Snowmobile bridge. Snowmobile. Yeah. It was snowmobile. Yes. Okay. Season okay. slide. What you want next? Step. Then. Season. Uh, so the historically there was a bridge across the Lamoille in that area uh, between the uh, what is now Old Mill Park and the skate park. Uh, there's been some long interest, uh, especially by the snowmobile community, about putting a bridge back there. With the use of the skate park, the build out of the bike terrain park as so a part of the skate park, there's a lot of renewed interest in having a, uh, a bridge back in that area that would be used by snowmobiles in the winter, bikes and pedestrians in, in the summer. Uh, that would connect the rail trail to our, again, our bike drain parts. Um, it would provide, uh, in case you can highlight some of this of a, of a, a loop system that we could make with trails in the town and uh, also some additional access to downtown for folks in on that side of town and in the trailer park who currently don't have safe pedestrian access to the downtown. Um, so there's been some general interest in it. We're at the stage now where we could go for a scoping study to answer some of the technical questions about building a pedestrian bridge. But I know that there are other questions that folks are interested in. So are there, is it good? We're kind of raising this as an opportunity to talk about those questions that won't be answered by a scoping study that we we want to know about the project. You know, I know Mark, you had some interest in kind of the change in traffic patterns, what kind of impact that might have to downtown business. Yeah. Uh, so that, that would be a good example that I wouldn't expect our scoping study to be able to answer necessarily. What do you mean by the traffic pattern? Traffic, what traffic? My concern all along was that when the snowmobile bridge, it was used by snowmobile for back up. Like that. Like that. Like that. So you're not in favor of a pedestrian bridge, but would be in a favor of a snowmobile bridge. I would. Is there a cost match with the uh, with the scoping study? It would be uh, it was Time here in case you can speak up. 10 to 12,000. Yeah. 20% match. 20% match. The 10,000 is the match? Or? Yes. yes. 10 to 12. Yes. Yeah, it's like a 50, 60,000 hour open study. Of each and each and 10 to 12, Which we don't 
have any in our current budget. Right? Unless you can start printing some. I can do that. Print the budget, print some money. So, final money. question. Is, is this for pedestrian and bicycles, or is this snowmobile pedestrians and bicycles? We we all three, all three. Yeah, right. And Stern, uh, for Rob, I believe it's stuff also. Our snowcat, yeah, yeah. We totally yeah, we are in full support of that. If it if it helps the snowmobile club and our equipment. Could the snowmobile club come up with a match for this scoping study? <laughs> <laughs> that would have to go to last. We need to, we need to be, we would need a bridge similar to the one over um, the Morsel Bypass. I that would support 12, the, the boomer I think weighs 12,000 pounds. We have a detailed email from Rob Rodriguez that we can share with you that gives the exact specs of what the snowmobile club requires for a bridge. Did that bridge end up at the, the original one? Did that end up on a town property or did that end up on the property that the village bought for the wellhead protection? Yes, I believe the one. Right. The, that bridge was behind, it was on Westland property. Right. And it was, the bridge was allowed by the Westlands for the use of snowmobiling only. And the right of way for that bridge still sits. Uh, it's been the deed that the village acquired from uh, Buzz and Jeannie Osgood. We need Buzz and Jeannie Osgood to have this conversation not too long ago. But that, I, I guess, my point is that it's it's the other end of that is not on town owned property, it's on village owned property. The other side of the bridge on on the, it's on, on the village, I believe. On the western side. I believe so. Yeah. So. If we wanted to put it back in that location. Right. Yes. But I think that you're proposing a different location. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, it would be between Oldville Park and the River Park Park. It's my firm that we've been talking to. Such. They want no part of a bigger round bridge. And I don't imagine the village would want near the right. reservoir and get what we don't know. That that's not gonna work. So what this open study will do is give us the, the physical, the permit, the, all the facts that once we see the feasibility of all the information. Then we can more intelligently say we want to plan for this. Then we can have the conversation. Can we actually go? Uh, uh, there, if I can show you when we open it, because I can explain this in one minute. Can we handle through or not? The can we just handle it down the board and explain it? I can move it. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's very simple. Here's history, here's the current. This is a survey that we did in 2001 when you know, the trailer park flooded and we created the river park. We did, we asked uh, 2,600 people in surveys about various uses, asked a whole series of questions about the use in the past. Uh, we had a huge response to that survey. Over half of the respondents were households or stakeholder groups. In any case, 90% of people said, yeah, we want a bridge, <laughs> we want a bridge between the parks. Okay, that was the highest, the highest number. Um, so there's, there's this strong, always and always has been a strong interest in having that connection. Okay. Today, we have both present and planned opportunities in what I'm calling the five mile Johnson loop, 
Hills, which is near the rail trail. Uh, yeah, there's a little park in where the bridge could go, big area. Here's Johnson Park where the rail, where the other access is, you know, from the rail trail to the field. What's the back side? Pardon me? What's the back side? Sorry. Yeah. Another uh, back side. Uh, that's right, 15. The yeah. Oh, sorry. This is 15. Here's Railroad Street. Yeah. And then, you know, whoop, this is all rail trail. So we have we have two ends of rail trail, making a five mile route, which is a nice little flat ride mostly. And within it, we have all kinds of businesses, we have the village, we have this rec pod area, um, you know, potential more right, uh, multi use trails, I should say, in the, in the towns, in the town forest, I should say. Uh, and, you know, this bridge would serve, it would be a great thing to have for multi use. This would be really a huge, much more huge thing for people in the town. I mean, but so I mean, we have this. This exists already, and the, the bridge is a really cool investment. Really, to, I mean, a it would restore something, but b it's a really interesting potential development thing. To learn if we can even do it or how much would it cost. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that you approve for us to say, yeah, go do that application. Go for that grant. But I think you said you don't have money in the future, but I have $10,000 in the future. That's correct. Are the funds? Because ARPA funds is a community conversation kind though. We can't just willy-nilly spend them on projects the select board does. That's all I'll say. I'll pass that back to Brian. Uh, well, yeah, it's not to Brian <laughs> It's up to the board, really. But, um, that I Any questions? Well, I'm just wondering, with that, only on this with us? I don't know. I we Rob and I would have to talk to the last office specifically. Because twenty percent match. That's a pretty hefty chunk of two off. Ten thousand dollars. Five thousand. Probably tuck that somewhere in the budget for ten thousand retirement. All right. You know, long term concern would be uh, the scoping study would answer the question of what the cost is and, you know, do some basic design stuff. But I can tell you right now, you're talking about millions of dollars to build the bridge necessary to get a Glomer across it. Um, and with the <laughs> with the rules and requirements now with regard to the the dis, you know, the the rules and regulations now I believe are one and a half times the bank width for the abutments of a bridge of any sort of bridge. That's that's huge, and I mean if we're gonna if we're gonna spend money on a pedestrian bridge, in all honesty, I'd have to. You know, we could be talking. Fifty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars of local match to do that. At least. At least. I, I, I just. I mean, it's probably a great idea, but where the hell are we going to get the money to actually build the bridge? The, the ten, ten, twelve thousand. What's that? No, no, he's talking about. No, I'm building. talking about if, 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 if we, if we come up with a ten or twelve thousand, and they come up with a proposal, I can tell you right now that I'm sure that. Bridge is going to be well over a million bucks. Well, at least. So, yeah. well, so they turn money every day. They've been doing it now the last couple of years on a regular basis. Yeah, but we got to come up with 20% of that, Bobby. I'm okay with taking the federal money. It's the 20%. 
that the town taxpayers have got to come up with that concerns me. And if I've got to, if I've got to spend a hundred thousand bucks of town taxpayer money, I'd rather fix a bridge that is but essential to our transportation. Oh, I understand yeah. that. So, what if we end up having a brewery in the industrial park potentially, and those employees work? In Jeffersonville, and all summer long, they ride their bicycles to work. And they come across this bridge, potential bridge. I see it as an asset to the whole community. It was when it was a bridge, a Snowmobile bridge to begin with. Lots. Could be. Well, there's a lot of ifs there. There's always an if. I just want to mention that when this came, bridge discussion came up a while back, the Conservation Commission had a pretty strong um, opinion, good information from various members about uh, the regulations that affect getting the abutments and all that, which Dr. was referring to. So I, I know that at that time, on that first bridge, I think this is a different one. Um, it was a real concern. It was a real concern as to what it was going to take physically on the ground as well as the cost for a bridge in that location in the size of the I'm just saying that's legal with that community permits. It's the scope. Are we just getting the temperature of the board on this? Yeah. Yeah. So. If we are, so are. I think that we, I feel like uh, the board is kind of has a view. Con so conceptually, I agree with it, but we have the Holmes Meadow project that will change the water path. Plus, this would be a great thing for an economic developer position to dig into and snip out different funding sources for. So I don't think we should do it now. So you're not, do not want to go down to this path right now, Duncan? I'd be a lot happier if, if I knew that we had a slush fund that we could tap for the scoping study, you know, for the 20% cost share that we need. Fair enough. Yes, fair enough. Fair? That's a, I guess that's enough. Same thing with Joseph. I like the concept, but. Okay, Mark. And we should, I mean, if we if we if we like the concept, we should plan for it in a budget next year because these, you know, these pedestrian bike pad grants come up there every year. Yeah, this, this is a this is an annual program that we were talking about the wrong. Uh, and if we give us time to talk to Bass about cost sharing the match, you know, if we might be able to bring it down to closer to a 5,000. I could support that in the discussion for next year's budget. Yeah, I could too. Okay. I mean, I can't help but wonder if other programs out there would help share costs too. Mm -hmm. Like, why do the Tet Johnson residents need to be the one to share the cost if there are other? Programs out there that would benefit from this. Um, maybe there are, maybe there are. Well, Bobby committed to 5,000. I bought personally, she's writing a check. Yeah, I heard Bobby say she's going to write a check. <laughs> <laughs> I could do it, it wouldn't help. Big it on the Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so I think we're not, that, we're not, we don't quite have a stomach for that right now. I hear you. Um, but if, if Rob identifies another great opportunity, obviously, we'll. Come back for that. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Not. Not dropping it forever. No. Just it. we're not going to make the June headline no. for okay. for this grant. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Casey, and thanks for coming in, Bobby. Um. Okay. Next up is the post grant project for the community oven. Can yes. we make this quick? Uh, Shannon isn't going to be able to be here, obviously, to speak to this. But the community oven committee, I uh, would like to seek a Rise VT and a Green Mountain Fund grant to pay for uh, 
upkeep and meals at the uh, at the community oven. There's no local match. They've had both grants in the past with great success. Motion to approve community oven to Second. submit grants for Rise Vermont and Green Mountain. All those in favor, signify right. saying aye. Did you get that whole thing done? Okay. <laughs> That's opposed. All right, I got it. All right. Hopefully another quick one, review and selection of audit proposals. I think the big one here was that we were just wondering what Rosemary's thoughts were yep. last time. Rosemary? I looked over the proposal and I think Mary did come in and I talked to a couple of the um, towns and they were very pleased with their performance. Okay. That's, that's good. Right? You don't have any concern about the costs or anything like that? It seemed reasonable? They seem very pretty reasonable. Move to, move to accept the audit proposal as submitted. From? Uh, from R.H.R. Smith and Company. Proven okay. expertise and integrity. <laughs> Do we have a motion? Second. 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 In favor, signify with a nine. Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, have it. A little bit of additional kind of next steps for this. I've got a meeting uh, next week, I think next Thursday, with Sarah Macy of VLCT. Uh, they, I'm going to go over the document with her and uh, the last question of the uh, all right, it's needed uh, to draw up a plan for audit preparation and what that will look like. Is Rosemary in that meeting? I don't think I, I I'll, inv I'll invite Rosemary to. Definitely. Absolutely. If Rosemary's not the there, please reschedule so she can. I, I will. Uh, and yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll have the option of trying to prepare for the audit ourselves or possibly using RHR or using BLCT. And we'll, at that time, we'll have a better understanding of what those different preparations will require us. Rosemary, if you feel like that's not a good way, like if you feel like bringing her into the mix will just cause confusion, please speak up and just say that because we shouldn't waste everybody's time. That's not going to be helpful. Probably has to be good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good. Uh, moving on. Discussion of next steps for economic development. Um, I didn't include it in the packet, but you got it by email, and uh, it was on your handout for the job description, the existing job description for the. Community and Economic Development Coordinator of the Town and Village, with our historic previous job description. Uh, and then we've got a new update for Town of Johnson Economic Development Course. Uh, did we settle on wanting to post this as a position, or are we still, I feel like we're still talking about? How we want to handle this, but am I misremembering? I don't think that we settled on how we were going to handle it. Okay. Uh, but kind of the, the the only action I could really take out of our last meeting was that uh, and you wanted to see the job description and what the job description would look like, whether we hire that position or fulfill some of these duties of the contract position. Yes. Uh, I, I think we need to have that discussion, Beth, and I think it's a discussion that we should set aside a fair amount of time at a work session for and sooner than later. Um, okay, are there any questions about what's here? Has have folks had a chance to look at it? Well, so, but the contract with the employee that we could change this. So I, I have some comments on it. If you were going to go into an employee, how this job is. Okay. Is, is this pretty much mirror images? Yeah, it's very similar to the. Yeah. 
my sense is that um, after listening to the group, the kind of assessor job, that this should be probably a contract. I mean, forty thousand dollars going to get that all the more. And I think I think it should be. I I need mean, to contract. And then maybe we can work again with the other towns for forty thousand. I don't know. Would it be three days a week? Maybe. Is it three days a week? But not the time. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. If we're looking for somebody who's, or if we find somebody who is looking for a full time job, uh, we can't do it all. You know, and I know we constantly go back and compare the world to Leia, but Leia was looking for a part time job, right? Could we find somebody in that capacity? I don't know. Because we, we found somebody who wants to work three days a week and has a skill. It could be a they could be part of the Yeah, no, I understand that. And there's also an opportunity for sharing an employee with another town. Which we almost got a chance to do that. <clears throat> Which is kind of an intermunicipal agreement. Um, I still think it, it bears a discussion by the full board more than we can give it tonight. I mean, I'll just say that I also generally agree with Mark. I feel like a contract position is more appropriate in this particular case. Um, I feel like it can really help us define what our scope and expectations are if it's contract related, uh, as opposed to being an employee. I think employees tend to get lots of things thrown at them, uh, where if we can really focus and have their expectations set, it would be beneficial. But I think there's absolutely ways to limit the scope of what they did. We were very much aware of that when Leia was here, that we, which is why this job description talks about the setting of the priorities and not, you know, not spreading that person too thin. Um, so I think there are ways to to deal with that issue. I, I agree with you that it's an issue that we need to be concerned about, but I think we can do this. And if, we, if we're looking at a contract, what I definitely don't want to see is contract just to help somebody write grants and administrate because we need somebody who with that forward thinking and working on finding the opportunities out there that we don't know are there. That's what we're really missing that we used to have. And I don't think a contracted person, you know, there's a lot of people who can uh, write grants and administrate grants, but it's some, somebody who can set different programs up so that they're ready for grant or we even had like our congressional leaders coming to us with opportunities because they knew we had projects that were project ready and that's the kind of person we need that one that will take us into the future wow i think that to that point there probably should be some stronger language about uh, visionary and forward thinking and whatever we. Yeah, this is on. much. Familiarity with kind of that. Yeah. Yeah, I want some way in the high school working to find grants. Good. Yeah. One, one thing that is a carryover from the original job description, which I'm not sure is as applicable now as it was at the time, was the connection with the Johnson Planning Commission. Um, at the time, the Johnson Planning Commission was was pretty visionary. 
Um, and they actually came up with a lot of ideas for grant proposals. Now, maybe that can happen again, but there's a fair amount of focus in here on, you know, coordinating with the Johnson Planning Commission. Um, uh, sort of where they seem to be right now gives me a little bit of heartburn. That was part of my edits for the, the job description. Anything Planning Commission reference, I crossed it out because, to your point, they're not at a place where they could really provide a lot of direction. Yeah, that was a different time. Is that our fault? Do we have ownership in that? I feel like we might. Possibly. Possibly. Another another thought on. Well, I don't know how much we want to talk about about the draft. It seems to me that we haven't settled yet on whether it should be an employee or a contract employee. Or a joint employee. Or a joint employee. Straight contract right. for specific projects. There's no point in wasting time on a job description unless that's the way the board wants to go. I disagree. I think that we are talking about really good stuff right now and we're defining what it is we're looking for in we're looking for in someone. And that's going to determine how we take that next step forward. If we're gonna instead talk about this has gotta be an employee or it's gotta be a contractor that's boxing us in right off the bat, and why would we do that to ourselves? Like we're talking about things like would, do or don't want the planning commission. But you would still talk about expectations either way. It's just you'd go about it a different way because you'd be spending money a different way. I guess we can keep talking about it, it's fine. I'm not opposed to it. Those are my feelings. <laughs> you don't have to agree with them. I also feel reasonably strongly that the, re the reporting requirements should be direct to the select board. Seems reasonable. Versus have it flow through Brian. Yeah. Or, or anyone, not Brian per se, but the position. I, I think economic development is a department head type level position that should be a direct report to, to the board. Mm -hmm. Because I think that ties into best concerns about spreading that person to thin, you know, having the board ultimately be the one that decides what gets worked on and what doesn't get worked on. And also, then everyone will know that when they speak, that they speak for the board because they're getting their direction directly from the board. And we, if you have that position, we want them working directly for the board in chasing down all of these. We're, we're going to be providing the direction. And it really needs to be a a high level position. And before they took the job, they need to realize that that is an expectation. Yeah. You think this group agreeing or disagreeing? Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so we added a bunch of good stuff. Anything else that we want to work into this? And then, yeah, to your point, Duncan will spend some concerted effort on getting it right quickly. Anything else? Was our uh, what was the wording? I don't remember how it worked. The wording was pretty vague on it because we didn't know what we were getting into and what additional support we wanted. So I think that it could uh typically next one. Pretty often. Sound 
every other year. I thought there was a limit of what it is. For every year. For every year. For my position. For my position. Are they at the wave? Because what the challenge is down in the past, Mark, is put, you know, the, this a word, put the basic concept search. out as an article to be voted on, and then thereafter incorporate it into the budget. For the for the position, I'm not saying we have to do that in this case, um, but that's that's what's been done. Uh, and we had we had left the wording a little bit vague uh, in the in the article because we weren't we wanted it to be eligible to be something that we would review, but we weren't sure. And we also didn't know how the village was going to play out. Yeah. And we wanted still flexibility. And we still don't know. And we still don't know. <laughs> yeah. So the, the board can, you know, this board is not the board that voted on that article language. The board can decide that the article language was too vague. But the prior board, when the article language was written, had believed that that was. That that enabled them to continue the forty thousand dollars into the future if it was warranted. A good person in this position will more than pay for themselves. Yep. Depending on how you look at it, yes. Mm -hmm. Over the over the lifetime of the position, I think that that's true. On any given year, that's not as likely to be true, but in aggregate over time, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to take another crack at job description with the feedback that you gave me tonight. Uh, I'll research. We'll work on that. It'll be a little, I'll try and work it in a little bit so that we're not roped into a, discussion, a decision already about whether it's a part time hired position or whether it's a part time contract or whether it's a project contract. But I think that we can get some of our vision of what we want out of the job down on paper, uh, which will, will help us moving forward. Um, right there. We have an opportunity at our first meeting in June to dedicate a little bit of time. June's packed. Pick another day. As long as June 8th. Shall the vote. Okay, so shall the vote ready? Shall, stop it, Eric. Shall, shall the vote. You thought I wasn't paying attention, but I heard June 8th. Shall the voters authorize the town of Johnson to raise, appropriate, and expend up to $40,000 for the purpose of community and economic development? Vague. There were some good board members last year at being vague. <laughs> Some of them still here. Everybody knows what you have. Okay. Oh, no. We weren't sure that it would be a position. We should also have a joint meeting. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we could spend it on one song. Yeah. Oh, exactly. <laughs> All right. So I've got a little bit of feedback. I'm going to provide an update, and we will try and schedule some dedicated time for a longer discussion. Hope you guys don't have summer plans. <laughs> okay, sheriff's department and contracts and all. All right. So in your packet, sorry, the page thirty-five. Thank you. Yeah. We have the existing uh, contract with the sheriff's department. Has he given you proposed figures for renewal? Uh, I actually just got it this morning. What's communications? I have this graph. I don't have it up the top of my head. Well, I didn't know if you had but it. it is the, what is the proposed amounts? Huh? It's the proposed, the dollar figures are the proposed amounts that we were given that we wrote into the budget. There was no budget. Oh, they are. 
Okay, so we'd be on with the budget. Yeah. Okay. I think we're running out of headway and there's not much in this contract that. So I reached out to Wolcott and Hyde Park. Uh, Wolcott has, I haven't heard from Hyde Park yet, uh, to be fair, I just reached out this morning. Uh, Wolcott has received their upgraded, updated contract too. I assume it's not coincidental. Um, they have received their, received their updated contract from the sheriff's department as well. Okay. Uh, as of this morning. So you, um, I asked, so I had in the prior term, well, my same term, but the prior board had been in discussions with them also with the other town select boards. Uh, and Kirk Klein on Wolfett and Linda Martin on Wolfett um, are consistent in their roles. Um, and Kirk basically, I asked if they had any plans for this year's budget. I was curious if so, what they were. And Kirk responded and said um, that they've been in touch with the sheriff's department with some blue sky ideas, as he called it. Um, and we know that this year's budget is fixed, um, but he is interested in sharing thoughts and specifics on this contract and future contracts. I let him know that we had had some, you know, preliminary, we should probably make a more current contract with the sheriff's department, um, but we wouldn't have time this time around. Um, so just a heads up with that general vague, nothing specific <laughs> conversation is happening. Um, this contract is due July 1st. Yes. So we would have to, we don't have to sign anything right now, but I asked Brian to get these for tonight and have us discuss tonight in case there are any uh, tweaks we would like to ask for, nothing major, maybe a, if there's something worth asking about that's minor for this one, um, that we would have time to consider that and reach out to the sheriff's department before the contract is due. I think it would be nice if they gave like a yearly report on, you know, budgeted versus spent so that we could inform the taxpayers that are paying the bills. I agree. Yep. It's really not, it's not a big ask, especially with budgets like this, they have to have line items that they know what they spent on. I don't know, Eric. During you know, COVID, you've been on before COVID, we used to, we used to always have a meeting uh, Communication department, which was all 10 towns, and uh, then it was a patrol of all three towns, select boards. Uh, and he would go over the budget. That's exactly what you're saying with the uh, money left over. Well, I'm not talking one or two items. No, it was I'm talking an actual budget, like yeah, yeah. we have. Yeah. That's what he would always do. With all three towns in the same call? On the same meeting? Yeah, well, we met at the sheriff's office. The select boards all met? Yeah. Hmm. That has never happened since I've no, been No, it, it, it's been disrupted. Mm -hmm. And it usually was not for it. Usually the board would send a representative or two. Okay. Uh, but it was a... Uh, That's not something you could just email? Uh, I, would well, actually, I, I think that we, I think it's warranted to talk about, you know, that we're, we'd like to restart that process and ask him to present. He has come to select like board meetings in the past to present. I expect he would do it again if he was asked. The benefit of like all three patrol counties there is you can direct him on what you want. It's not just one select board asking for something. We have a lot more clout at that time if all three of us agree. Uh, I'm going to ask the 
chairs. I know Lopa will, will be interested. I have no idea. I don't know that. I don't know Brian has the same. I don't know if Brian has the paper. I assume he would also be interested though. And if they all are, I would reach out, happily reach out to Roger and try to get that scheduled. Little more kind of shares, but he typically does that in all the No, I would reach out to Jim. Get scheduled for that. Yes. I think he's one of the highest paid sheriffs in the state. I'm sorry, yeah. What did you say, Mark? I think he's one of the highest paid sheriffs. He is the, well, the sheriff's department. It's the highest. He may, he may be the highest sheriff, too. The department as a whole is the highest, has the highest revenue of any department in the state. Yes. But in his defense, he goes after a lot of grants and you know sources of funding that other departments don't. Yeah, he does the drug collection, all those safe drop boxes and things like that. So he does a lot of he do a few sheriffs that he has a full time control. Yeah. So he's got really actual well, none of them have a communication department. Yeah, Ramon County is the only secondary piece out of the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Beth, uh, you know, there's one thing in here. I, just, I don't know that there's anything we can do about it, but bullet one is the Ramon County Sheriff's Department will provide routine patrols and investigations for the enforcement of state and local statutes, regulations, and ordinances. <laughs> and, How do you bring that up? Uh, well, <laughs> for example, speed limit ordinances and uh, speed speed limit signs, and every four tenths of a mile. Uh, <clears throat> I think they've been kind of telling us for a long time that they don't feel that some of our ordinances are enforceable, and I think we should push back a little bit on some of that stuff. The ATV ordinance, we've got an ATV ordinance. If he's not going to enforce it. Should that be excluded from the contract? And if so, should we pay him less because he's not willing to enforce the ATV well, ordinance? We're not paying him. We're paying the Lamar County Sheriff's Department. Uh, yep. Well, he is the sheriff. And Understood. He controls the department. So. Understood. He's the guy who negotiates. Right. So by state statute, technically the town for you know patrol is only paying the Lamoille County Sheriff twenty four thousand eight hundred dollars a year. They're paying the department oh uh, whatever that is four hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year. Well you're talking different just wanted to make sure dispatch we knew who we were writing the check to <laughs> If we had a no, secondary piece of it. He gets money for dispatch too and patrol. He gets 5% of yeah. any contract that he has. All right. Uh, we kind of keep us on track. Uh, is there anything, sorry, but I just want to ask again. Sorry. So your point is valid. I hear you on, on bullet one. But otherwise, we're no feedback on this at this point. We're going to walk, we're going to, well, assuming a motion passes uh, in June, we're going to have this come up again. And if we're going to, if we need to have any discussion about any of the items ahead of that, we should have that discussion sooner rather than later so that in our next meeting, when this does come up again, we're ready to execute. Or not the contract. In the long term, I, I just, you know, my, my concern is I think Roger does a good job. I think we get, you know, all in reality, we probably get pretty good service from the contract, but I do have a concern that he's going to retire sometime. And I'm not sure that we're going to get that. Now, I'd like to think we would, but I also think that we should perhaps investigate other options and opportunities for you know long long term for law enforcement. It's a big chunk of our, you know, it's it's 27 to 28 percent of our budget. It's a lot of money um, in our budget. It's not not an insignificant sum of money. And it's only going to get bigger. Yeah. 
That is true. So if anyone in addition to Duncan would like to explore that. <laughs> uh, well, we can just go along and renew the contract every year until the shit hits the fan, and then we're back to this. So, I do you think we should continue to have? And I would happily be part of those discussions. I have been a little bit in the past. Um, I do think we should have some discussions with our partners in the contract. Uh, and continue that dialogue um, and maybe take some next steps. Another reason to do that was uh, Roger committed for three years to only 3% increases to give the towns the opportunity to have those discussions. I think we're in year two now and I think it might be in year three. We're in year three. three. Well, we'll three. Yeah. yeah. Next budget, July 1st, we will be in year three. Okay. Uh, COVID threw a wrench in that. And frankly, this is just a that? Well, this doesn't have to be signed until July 1st. It right? does not have to be signed. I oh, will bring it back up. Just wanted to give the opportunity for feedback ahead of our meeting to make the signature. In case anyone wanted to bring anything up so there was time for the session with the sheriff's department. So, if you the, the, the new contract appears on the page. So All right. That is yeah, added. We have the potential action on the Lazari. Lazar, and that was going to, we thought that was likely to be preceded by an executive session. Right. Okay, no, communications that. with our attorney. So we don't have any more, we don't have anything else that doesn't involve an executive session. Uh, do we want to change the order at all or just run through them as presented? Um, I would propose that we do remember the performance evaluation for Jason first. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion? I'm make a motion we come into the next session during performance evaluation for the toy and allowed by the PSA 315A315. 15 minutes. <laughs> Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and show up in executive session at 924. Well, the whole map, I would say, so yeah.